The year is 1978, and the Porsche 935 is well established as the world's most dominant race car. The 935's success is due to many things, most notably the vague rules of the Group 5 racing category and race engineer Norbert Singer's ability to exploit those rules. But the 935 also has one major advantage. Unlike the rest of the production-based cars in Group 5, the Porsche's engine is located at the rear of the car, which allows their engineers to design a front end that gives the 935 superior aerodynamics. But despite its two years of outstanding performance, Porsche has decided to end the 935 program, with the exception of one last 935. Porsche is setting the sights of their final 935 on an all-out victory at Le Mans, and they have given their engineers one singular focus, to produce the fastest race car ever built. Every single unclear rule and every single loophole will be exploited to levels that can only be defined as genius. Every structural element, every mechanical element, and every square inch of the 935's friction-inducing body will be so thoroughly reworked that it will be nearly impossible to tell that this wicked machine was once upon a time a Porsche 911. Oh, and real quick, if you're enjoying this video, or you just like learning about Porsches, click here to subscribe. Powertrain engineer Hans Mesger is tasked with making the 935's modest six-cylinder engine generate mind-bending amounts of power. Learning from the harsh lessons of the 935-77's engine problems, he comes up with the idea of water-cooled cylinder heads. And to eliminate the previous head gasket failures, he decides to weld the new cylinder heads directly to the engine's cylinder banks, eliminating the need for a gasket and allowing the engine to withstand higher boost pressure. Next, he bores out the 3-liter engine to 3.2 liters and installs four overhead camshafts. And to satisfy the enormous horsepower requirements, he installs two huge KKK turbochargers with custom-designed waste gates. By the time Hans Mesger is done, the six-cylinder boxer engine produces 845 horsepower. Chief Engineer Norbert Singer is in charge of aerodynamics, and he has the near-impossible task of designing a new body that keeps air friction to a minimum, but also generates enough downforce to keep the incredibly fast car glued to the track. The low-drag package that he designs is so extreme that people will be arguing about the car's appearance more than four decades later. To give the car the best possible airflow management at extremely high speeds, the new body will need to be huge. The front fenders are widened by 128 millimeters, and the already incredibly wide rear fenders are widened by an additional 17 millimeters. Norbert Singer wants to extend the width of the door panels so they are flush with the new fenders, but the rules state that the car must retain its original doors, so he decides to cover them with newly created skins to achieve the desired width. But the FIA delegates object to the fully covered doors, so Singer decides to only widen the front of the doors, which the FIA approves. To reduce drag and airflow separation at the rear of the car, the tail is extended an incredible 21 centimeters, and the new deck lid is topped off with a rudimentary and enormous adjustable wing. To give the 935 the lowest possible center of gravity, the gearbox is mounted upside down, and the entire floor pan is removed. This allows the engineers to lower the car a staggering 10 centimeters, by the time the engineers are finished, the object that sits before them is no longer recognizable as a car, and one of them remarks that it looks like a white whale, and from that moment, the 93578 would forever be known as Moby Dick, in reference to Hervin Melville's novel.
On its road to Le Mans, the 93578 would compete in only one race, the Six Hours of Silverstone. And on May 14th of 1978, drivers Johan Moss and Jackie Ix dominated the field and easily earned Moby Dick its first win, finishing seven laps ahead of the second place car. Confidence is high. On June 10th of 1978, the 93578 enters the 24 Hours of Le Mans with Rolf Stommelin and Manfred Trudy at the wheel. It quickly proves to be the fastest car on the track, passing even the top tier prototypes and achieving a speed of 226 miles per hour on the Mulsan Strait. But endurance and efficiency soon prove to be the White Whale's vulnerabilities, and the team begins to fall behind as various mechanical issues and extremely high fuel consumption require the car to spend long periods of time in the pit lane. By the end of the race, Moby Dick would score an anticlimactic 8th place. Not wanting to put their efforts in vain, Porsche enters the 935-78 in two more races. At the six hours of Vallelunga, Jackie X and Manfred Schrute are leading the race with just seven minutes to go. But then a catastrophic engine failure occurs, and the car never crosses the finish line. Next, Jackie X drives solo at the Norazing Trophy, but a brake failure causes him to finish 21st overall. After the race, the 93578 is sent to the Porsche Museum and never raced again. In the end, it was Porsche's obsession with speed that crippled the 93578. With a greater focus on durability and more time spent testing, Moby Dick would have been one of the most potent and successful race cars ever built. Maybe it's the way the car looks, maybe it's the nickname given to it, maybe it's the psychedelic graphics package, or maybe it's everything. Because despite the 935's dismal racing career, it will forever remain one of the most famous and beloved cars ever built. While Moby Dick was struggling, the Porsche built 93576s and 93577As, and Kremer built K1s and K2s were dominating the racing world, and managed to rack up an astonishing 62 wins for the 1978 season. Most notably, Daytona, Sebring, Mugello, Talladega, Dijon, Nürburgring, Road Atlanta, Laguna Seca, Silverstone, Lime Rock, Watkins Glen, Hockenheim, Vallelunga, and a class win at Le Mans. In 1976, Porsche created a monster and they let it out of its cage. It mutated, it multiplied, and it took over the world of automotive racing. But once they lost control of their creation, Porsche decided to wash their hands of it and they would never build another 935 again. But there was another company ready and willing to usurp the throne of the 935 and take it to the next level. Thanks for checking out this video and if you enjoyed it, I've got many more videos documenting Porsche's incredible race history. So click here to subscribe.